Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I am Barbara. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending a few minutes with me. Today, I'm going to give you a tour of how things are progressing. It is the last few days of November. Uh, so in the last week, uh, it'll be December here in just a few days. So I wanted to kind of just document and see where we are and how things are going. So I'm outside. Um, it is a bit cool today. Um, the high is like 60, but it's not a warm 60. It is very... Um, breezy and brisk and cool <laughs> so even though some 60s feel like pretty good um this one is a bit brisk so i'm glad about the weather i'm certainly not complaining but it's just not as um warm because even in the tunnel it's registering like 50 58 something like that so maybe it's like 58 degrees and of course the, the tunnel's been open ever since last week so i thought i would take you along to see and so there's three pretty much main areas we have the outside garden we have the tunnel then we have behind the house i just came from behind the house and pretty much everything there looks good um in relation to my video that i did earlier in the week where i said my plants were not perky the ones that were not perky did not perk up like the broccoli and stuff like that and so i've kind of resigned myself to the fact i think it just got really too too cold even though it was covered um, it got down like to 20 to 22 here, sustained days on end. So for whatever reason, they just didn't fare well. Um, so I ended up pulling like three broccoli plants out and two other plants. But the lettuce seems to have perked up and, and the cabbage seems to be doing well. So everything back there seems to be doing um, A-OK. -okay. I'm going to take you and let you see the outside garden. It's a wrap. <laughs> it is a wrap. Um, so again, the outside garden was an experiment to see how things would fare. And of course, out here, nothing was covered. Um, they're all supposed to be frost hardy, but nothing was covered. Ooh, let's get a little windy. Um, nothing was covered. And um, I need my scarf. Nothing was covered. And you can tell. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. So let me take a look. You can see all the cabbages here severe damage I'm semi disappointed but not completely because again it was an experiment you can see the greens still battling with tons and tons and tons of insects and damage so y'all this is pretty much done it is done now remember we planted some garlic out here and that's good. I see I have some garlic sprouting. So that's good. You can see that there and there. So that's all a good sign. I'm not sure why um, the garlic, why in some places it sprouts quickly and some not so out here is where i planted it last and i would say if i have i don't remember how many i planted but i'm looking and i would say over half of it is sprouted um in the back of my house i have one bed that is probably half sprouted and then the other bed only has like two or three sprouted um it has me a little concerned because i thought it all from times past would have been sprouted by now even though when you look at google and what the experts say is that usually it doesn't sprout into the spring but i've always had mine sprouted and i could see it before the spring even got here but we shall see i'm i'm praying and hoping that it's okay so i don't know why some sprout and some doesn't that's interesting but as you can see here um on the outside tunnel i mean on the outside garden that stuff is done um and I'm so glad I listened to my husband that I didn't plant this whole space. I would have really been disappointed had I planted this whole space and it didn't um, do anything. And because I have the tunnel and the back of the house, plus just everyday life, I don't have time and I'm not willing to commit to covering the outside. So I'm never going to cover it. Um, covering the back of the house is enough for me. And of course, the high tunnel is already covered. So I think I've resigned myself to the fact that I'm not going to do a garden outside in the fall and winter i'm not gonna say never but certainly not on my list not on my list i tried it didn't work and i'm okay with it i'm okay with it so let's go inside the tunnel i'll show you how things are doing in there okay y'all look at my cauliflower 
It's so big and pretty. So, if you remember, well, let me show you one other thing. So, all of this is cauliflower. It's hard for me, but all of them are starting to form. The one that I just show you, showed you is the biggest. So, this whole bed mostly is cauliflower, then over there is the broccoli plants and then over there you see some romaine lettuce so y'all help me with the cauliflower so i haven't grown cauliflower successfully past this stage i tried it two years ago and it got like all brown and like moldy and then somebody told me that you're supposed to cover the leaves of the cauliflower so that it's kind of protected and so like the leaves and so last year i didn't even it didn't even grow so this year remember i bought the um plants from home depot I think I bought six of them, if I'm not mistaken. I have a video where I talked about that. And so the, the you can see that the um, the cauliflower is forming and the leaves are naturally covering it. Am I supposed to like secure it like with a rubber band and make sure the leaves stay covered? Or what are the tips to make sure it doesn't go moldy? I see like one little piece of brown on one piece of cauliflower. All the rest of them look pristine white. I want to make sure I don't mess this up if at all possible. So if you have grown cauliflower before, I'm in zone 7A. I'm in Tennessee. So if you have grown cauliflower before successfully, please leave me tips and let me know what I'm supposed to do at this point. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now I'll show you what's going on um, in some of the other beds. This bed seems to be doing well. This is kale and lettuce. Um, you can see the kale is doing good. You can look here and see... These are some rainbow beets. They're literally like about coming up out of the ground, but they're small. And I don't know if they're supposed to be this small. Um, you can kind of see that there. I thought they were supposed to be bigger, but they're definitely beets. I don't know if I'm supposed to push them back down in the ground or what. Leave me some tips on that. Here's my more low lettuce. It's slow coming back. Remember we did a big harvest and chop. It's coming back, it's just slow. The spinach, I did a big harvest of spinach um, a few days ago and cooked it up. It was good. You can see the tat soy over there. Kale and more kale. So this bed is looking good. We turn around here, we have more spinach. That seems to be looking good. Here's the broccoli. It's growing up nice and strong. And some broccoli is starting to form there, very small. This bed is mostly broccoli. This one is a little bit bigger. So it's looking good. And here's another one. So the broccoli is starting to form, but we're nowhere near um, a big enough head to harvest yet. This bed is the lettuce. It's still doing well. My cilantro has definitely taken off and gotten bigger. I have one there and a smaller one there that I did um, much later, but both of these I did from seed. There's the Brentwood lettuce that's finally coming up. And then here are all the carrots. And then that's kale that's come back pretty well. I've already harvested off that once. So I'm gonna do some more harvesting today of mostly kale and the greens. Let's see if we have any action on our carrots. I don't see anything like crowning. Oh, that little guy was already pulled out. But look. Um, I don't see anything crowning. So, not pushing through the ground, so it's not ready. Over here is where we just planted kale um, from seed. So, it's slowly growing which is good i gotta finish covering that with mulch this is the swiss chard that's growing slowly here is baby kale here are the carrots that we did from seed and transplanted we have some chives look at our radish that we did my first time ever doing radish this is watermelon radish i'm assuming that these crest when they're ready so you can start seeing them poke through. It's a 60 day variety. I gotta remember when I plant, it's been at least 30 days, but I don't think it's been 60 yet. And then you see I have some more carrots 
coming in here that I direct seeded. So they're coming in and it took literally two weeks for these to germinate, but they finally have germinated and I only seeded it once. I was about to reseed it when I saw them start to pop through. Sometimes it can be easy to not necessarily give up, but to just start over because you're like, it's not doing anything. It's not doing anything. Um, carrots generally take, it says on the packet, seven to 14 days. Those took 14 days. I was literally about to reseed and they started popping through and they're popping through quite nice. So that's good. Just when you think nothing's going to happen. And just remember generally in the way, if you live in a, you know, I'm in a pretty mild climate when it comes to winter, but as it, as the temperatures get cooler, it's going to take longer for your seeds to germinate because most seeds like to germinate, you know, in that 75 to 85 degree range. So just be mindful of that. Um, and if it gets too cold now, all of these seeds, I started when it was warmer, of course, it's gotten colder over the two weeks and now it's kind of back cool again. Um, but I try not to start seeds in the tunnel if it's like 50 degrees outside, because I know that it's just not, it's not going to work. Um, I'll take them in my house, get them started and then bring them back out here. Something like that. So let me show you the rest of the, how everything else is going in the ground in the tunnel. All the flowers seem to be happy. So that's good. That's alyssum. That is calendula, more calendula, and then those are pansies. So that's good. Then I'll take you over here to the herbs. My eucalyptus is still yet hanging on. And like these are new right here, so that's good. I'm just not getting, like I want it to be huge. That's my oregano, some pansies, and the rosemary. Rosemary is doing well. I need to harvest some of that two then you can see here here are the rows of greens so that one is looking good and all big and again this middle row is where i started so that's why they're the most full um in these because that's kind of where i started and then i went to this row and then this was the very last row that i did but those greens are looking good and coming up i'm hoping that when i do the next tour at the end of december um that all of this will be big and full. That's what I'm hoping for the next month or so. But I'll just kind of walk you down. You can see some are big. But I didn't have enough, as you can see, to do for Thanksgiving. But they're all coming in. Now, these is, is the next set that's getting bigger as well. And then here are the ones that I did last. So you can kind of see how that row goes up there. Those are my beets. They need some water, so we'll have to do that. And then, I'll be honest, I don't know what these are because for whatever reason, I didn't label them and I don't know why. I think they're cabbages that I did at the last minute. That would have been the only reason why I probably wouldn't have labeled them. But look at these cabbages here. They seem to be doing well, which I'm excited. I think I have six. They're all heading up good. So much better than last year. Much, much better than last year. And then over here is where we start to have some broccoli. It's not there yet, but it's getting there. And then we move into our Brussels sprouts. The leaves and structure is looking good. That's some kale. Here is that Asian green, Chima Josaya. I haven't harvested that yet. They got some insect damage on it, I see now. So I need to kind of take care of that today. And then that's another Brussels sprout. And then these are some that I planted, again, kind of last minute seedlings, broccoli that's growing slow. It definitely feel like things are slower. And I, I know I keep saying that. I actually went back and watched one of my videos from last year, like my, my November garden tour from 2021. And for the most part, I had some things that were a little bit more established, but for the most part, it seems like I'm on track right i'm on track i just knew that i had a full thing of collard greens 
this time last year. And when I went back and looked at the video, I did not. <laughs> I did not. So that's the beauty of me being on YouTube and I can, I've documented because I can go back and look at my old videos and see exactly where I was, exactly what I did if I forget something. Uh, so take heart, be encouraged because you couldn't have told me I did not have a full set of collard greens last Thanksgiving, but clearly I did not. Clearly I bought <laughs> greens last Thanksgiving because my greens were not ready. Um, and some things have progressed, like the cabbages look so much better um this year than they did last year but i started sooner um my brussels sprouts um are hanging in there remember i did a first set of brussels sprouts that had a lot of insect damage and then i did a second um layer of brussels sprouts those are the ones that's in the ground and they're doing um better so overall when i looked at the past video to this video I'm making progress. I'm learning. My stuff is looking better. So there is growth. But of course, as a gardener, you're always like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Let's go. And my husband and I were talking the other day how gardening in the fall is so much different than gardening in the summer. Like it is so much more laid back. So I don't spend nearly the amount of time in the garden during the fall and the winter that I did in the summer. I mean, there's just not much to do. You're not fighting with a lot of bugs. There's not watering that has to be done every day just because the temperatures are not that warm. Um, stuff is growing slower. Um, and so you're not having something to harvest every single day like you do in the summertime. Now, do I miss the summer? I do. <laughs> Even as crazy as it is, as worn out, as stressed, and as overwhelming as it is, Y'all, there is nothing like the summer garden. Nothing like it. The hustle, the bustle, the, all the stuff coming in. But I am enjoying the break. I'm enjoying the slower pace. I keep telling myself that because before you know it, it's going to be back. It'll be back here. And I will be wishing for these days like this. So if you are doing a fall garden and you're like, or if you're not doing a fall garden and you're already itching and you can't wait for the summer to come back, just I'm talking to me too. Let's take a chill pill. Let's just enjoy this rest. Let's breathe. Let's take it all in because before you know it, it will be back. It will be back. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my basket and harvest some kale and stuff. I'm trying to keep that going and put it in the freezer um, or use it fresh. So that way the plants stay, you know, they'll keep growing. So I'm going to do that. And I think that's pretty much the only thing I can harvest right now is the kale and then I did a big spinach thing. Um, I don't want to do any lettuce today because I still have some lettuce in my refrigerator that I need to use. So I may wait till later in the week to do that. But let's grab some kale and see what we get. And this is the back of the house now. So you can see this lettuce, it seems to have perked up. It's perky, it's standing up. Nice and tall. You can see the empty part, parts here. This is where I took away the dead plants. I gotta go put them in the compost. But you can see here, like, <clears throat> it was pretty bad. Um, on this one, I did an experiment. I just took off like the bad leaves to see if it would do anything to grow back. That one still looks good. That one is attached to this one, so I didn't move that one. And the giant red mustard seemed like it, it came back perky. And then over here, the red romaine looks great. The cabbages are definitely more upright. I think they took a little bit of a, a little bit of a slight bruising, but you can see they're not headed up as much as the ones inside the tunnel, but hopefully they'll still be okay. I left those in there and then you can see on this bed of garlic i have these few right here sprouting up but really nothing in the rest of this bed except one or two here so i'm not sure why versus this bed here and you can see y'all this is another video we got to fix this the wood came loose on my bed i'll talk to you about that later i have more springing up over here but still not the whole bed so that's that um but you can see here i got plenty of kale 
I'm going to harvest this as well. And then the beets. They still look a little down, so to speak. Got some weeds in here I need to get. But I think they're going to be okay. And then the carrots, of course, are A-OK. -okay. So let's get the rest of this kale. And we will have, have harvested quite a bit of kale today. And then we'll put that in the freezer. Okay, y'all, look. Look at all the kale we got. So I was pretty much stuffing. You can see it's all the way at the top. I was stuffing it in the basket. So that's a good harvest of kale. Most of this is the curly kale. I did get some dino kale or lacento kale down at the hot tunnel, but most of this out here is um, curly kale. Um, I don't know that I taste the difference. And maybe because usually I freeze it and then, um, what you call it? Come on out, son. Okay, my son's feeding the dogs. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, I don't know that I've tasted the difference between the different kinds of kale. Most of the time I freeze it, cook it, or I use it fresh like in a smoothie or something. It all tastes the same to me. Let me know if you have a favorite kind of kale if one tastes different than another. I grow different kinds because, again, I like the, I like the variation of how they look. I did a lot more curly kale this time than I did last year. Last year I did a lot of the Lacento kale and i think i did some red russian i don't think i did red russian this year but anyway i'm excited um, about our harvest and just a word of encouragement and as i'm encouraging you i really am encouraging myself because i can be kind of hard on myself want things to kind of hair up and grow and making sure that i'm doing things right and want to see progress because i am a results oriented person that's how i am in business that's how i am in my personal life but it's okay to just take a breath sometimes and remember what all you've already done, what you've already accomplished. And just because it's going slow doesn't mean that it's not going, right? It just may be going slower than what you anticipate or what you remember. But like I said, when I went back and looked at my video from last year, it seems like I'm right where I was last year, except my stuff looks better. So that's progress. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. If you like what you're seeing, I would greatly appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel, share it on your social media, tell a friend, tell an aunt, tell a neighbor, um, anybody who is interested in gardening or they have an interest, they don't even know where to start. I would love for you to point them to my channel because that's what it's all about. It's all about a journey. It's about us growing together in this community. I'm excited about what's to come. I'm excited for all of you and appreciate each and every one of you. Every comment, every like, every share. I really, really appreciate it. Remember, it's a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.